Greetings, my friends, and thank you for joining me here today. I want to show you a few things I've learned over the years. One of those is decoupage. I didn't call it that uh, when I brought out these transfers to you because uh, a lot of people say, what does that have to do with polymer clay? But I've been making decoupage items since I was five years old. And when I saw these beautiful transfers by Lisa Pavelka, even before I started making videos or really being a professional player, I thought I could use those for so many things. I just love them uh, more every time I see them. So I eventually bought them from the manufacturer, put in my store, tinypandora.com, so I could really explore that with you, make a lot of things. So let me show you what I've been up to so far. Let me know how you like this format. It's an all new camera, all new setup. Um, I haven't been able to be in the videos and talk with you much this past year because of the kind of camera setup I had. It was real touchy, it had to be on the work surface and sometimes then it really wasn't even great. But I'm hoping um, that this is better for you. I do look forward to talking to you and uh, I feel that with this setup I can go back and forth between the work surface and, um, and our face-to-face -face time so that it's, uh, you know, less boring, I hope. Anyway, I'm going to show you these transfers today and how I use them. I'm going to make um, a couple of items um, for you to try. And if you have questions or comments, be sure to email me at busypandora at gmail.com. Or you can always leave a comment here because I try to check them all. And one more thing, could you like and subscribe? Uh, I've been doing this for uh, eight years now. And... Um, Everyone who advises me said, why don't you ever remind them to like and subscribe? And I said, well, you know, I feel funny because if they like it, they'll, they'll say that they like it. If they want to subscribe, they will. You know, I don't want to bug them. But I am told that people do like it. They just forget to say they like it or they want to subscribe and they're going to do it later. So please like and subscribe and it'll help my video get out to more people. That helps my business, tinypandora.com, which supports my family and my daughter's family. And uh, it also helps more people see the techniques and the stuff I'm trying to show you. So thanks for coming today. Let's take a look at the work surface. I'll be back to you in a little while and we'll talk about it. So decals. Decals or water slide transfer, same thing. And that's because you cut them out, you put them in water, or you can spray the back, whichever you like. And you slide them off this paper and you have these little delicate transparent images which are so interesting and they can do so many things these are just a variety of different kinds that you may have in your selection uh, the black and white ones are in a separate selection and then all these fine art ones and vintage ones and stuff are in a different collection you'll see them at tinypandora.com anyway what i did with them is I just made a few things. I've made a lot of things. This is what I've got that I still have. Um, I don't sell my jewelry, but I give it away in drawings and prizes, and I give it away at Indie Jam uh, with raffle tickets. So I make it all year so I can give it to you. Anyway, um, here's a little geisha bead, a little embellishment on the back. Here's one. I found out during this process that you can reverse these. So now I wish I'd made those selections with two of each sheet, right? Because it's really neat that I can match these just by uh, turning them over when I apply them. And I'll show you that. And these are those black and white ones. I really wanted to show off the beautiful detail in those transfers. And these were super easy to make. You make some squares, you wrap it around. These high she beads were a little bit more work because of their size, but it was super rewarding. I'm going to show you that too. But just for the sake of example on some other colors, here's a vintage perfume bottle label, I think that is, uh, and that's on a, some yellow gold glitter clay. And I love the way the satiny, glittery look comes through these because they're kind of translucent and transparent, the transfers are. This one really shows that off. I mean, look how translucent that image is. And I put it on some um, yellow gold glitter that I just warmed up with a little bit of 
those are in crimson just kind of kind of a make a pinkish beige color and this is just a Skinner blend some iridescent clay that's from uh, Sculpey I just put a graphic down the center to make these earrings which are so cute and speaking of earrings I made a lot of these little earrings because they're easy to wear to go with a lot of things you can put different different kind of little embellishments on the bottom charm would be cute on there anyway uh oh i'm going to show you these too my daughter made these aren't these cute just did them with uh, magic gloss she just filled them in with magic gloss and they're so cute rings anyway i made a lot of things with this technique and i want to show you how really easy it is so we start today with a strip of clay this is some white uh, glitter clay. It's some um, white pearl clay. It's just called pearl if it's Sculpey Primo. And I threw some translucent in here and I did that because um, my white was a little overly soft. You can leach clay by laying it on paper to suck some of the uh, oil out of it, make it a little bit more firm. But uh, I had some really hard translucent that I wanted to use anyway. And when you put it in with some softer clay, it gives it a nice texture. And that's just easier for you when you're trying to form things is for the clay not to be too soft or too hard. So just remember you can make adjustments to the texture of your clay by mixing. I'm using a one and a half inch cutter and a one and a half inch cutter makes a cube this size. And that's the size that I had used in this one. So I'm gonna do that one. Um, two of these cutters will make you one of these. And if I were to do that, I'd be cutting out two of these, mixing them together, and just forming them into a nice cylinder. This one's baked, and we'll use it. But I want to show you something about that, because you may not want to just hand form each cylinder. You may want to make them all at one time. So I'm going to show you how to make cylinder beads that are more conducive to resizing and to making more of them. In the meantime, for the cube, all it takes is a cut, and we're going to roll it up into a ball, and then we're going to make it square. So you want to make as many of those as you want for your uh, project. We're just going to make one or two today. So I've got this I rolled up in my hands. Mine always turn into footballs when I roll them. It's just the shape of my hands. Anyway, I'm going to go like this. The way we always make a square ever since our first, you know, can of Play-Doh, right? Um, you're going to want it pretty sharp corners on your square because it's a lot easier to wrap a band of transfer over a nice flat even surface than it, it is in case there's waves in it or curves in it. So that's why I'm working with cylinders and squares today because they really lend themselves to, you know, to putting transfers on. So I've got my square pairs, tinypandora.com, and I can really quickly get my square to behave and to get sharp corners by using the appropriate size square pair. And I do that a lot. I got to get through them. I want them all sharp. I don't want to be pinching the sides up till the end of time. So I can get squares and make them the right size. And that's true of any cane. If I have a round cane laying here and I decide that one's going to be a square cane, that's actually what these are made for because, as you know, a round cane makes dots. I don't care how beautiful it is, it's still a round thing. If you want to take a cane and you want to make it uh, be a bracelet or you want a design sheet out of it, you're really going to need to make it square so you can connect the sides. And that's where square pairs came from and that's what they're mainly used for. But one thing that they do also is give you nice uh, quick square sides on your on your beads okay so you can do that and you can do that with these sizes and they all fit together for storage so 
You don't have to worry about that. This is how you do um, two beads. And that's only different from this bead in that they're all cut out of one tube rather than hand forming each bead. Okay. So I'm going to roll this up. When you're going to roll up anything, do it with a strip like this. Okay. So I get to the edge of this, make a nice bevel cut. I'm going to cut it at an angle because I don't really need a bump of any kind there. I'm being careful because this is a new work surface my friend gave me and I'm kind of testing it. It's some masonite. So far, I really like it. Anyway, I'm trying not to gouge it. So that's why I'm cutting kind of funky there. All right. Anyway, with this thin edge on it like it is, when I settle it down, I'm not going to get a big hump there that I have to later take out, you know. So those little things save you some time. I've got my cylinder. I've got it closed up with a bevel cut. I've got it nice and tight. When you start wrapping that piece of clay, I should have paid more attention and showed you that a little bit more. But when you're um, uh, wrapping up that piece of clay, rolling it into a roll, just make sure you start with a really tight edge. You don't want a hole in the middle of this, or really you don't want a hole in the middle of any roll, especially cane. In this case, you still want it to be really tight in the center there. I don't want any angles on this. And I'm going to take a bead piercing pin. You can use hanger wire if you can find it, because these you can't get anymore. If I could get these, they would be in my store. But anyway, they're great. They're Amico beading pins, and I'll probably end up having them made at a you know, metal manufacturer before long. But In the meantime, I'm hoarding these. Anyway, I have used hangers, and it was pretty good. You can sharpen the ends of them a little bit. I have to go to the cleaners to get a wire hanger, huh? You don't even see them anymore. So I've got a nice center hole here. Like this. And now you can only imagine how many of these I'm going to get out of this. If I'm going to reduce this and make it longer, it's going to stay nice and even for me. And I'm going to be able to just slice as many two beads as I want out of that. So, yeah, you know, I would have liked to have gone, ch -ch -ch -ch, just made this big, but it doesn't work like that. Because the more you roll on this, the larger this hole gets from the pressure on the middle. And you'll feel it kind of, kind of wobble. And I call that the, um, the wobble of death. Because once it starts wobbling on the inside like that, the hole through every one of these beads is now compromised and, and basically looks like crap. That's a technical term, you know. So yeah, you can go like that a little bit and help yourself if kind of the urge is there. But reduce this the, the way you would reduce any round cane. Kind of get it going end to end. If you have to cut some off the ends, which we will, you can. But go ahead and take the time to reduce this like you would a cane and you get a better result. Now, why didn't I just reduce it when it was off the pin? and just try to pierce it then because you can't piercing a big long piece like that all the way through evenly just forget about it so that's another thing I'm making them on here and now they're already pre-pierced could you just make a cylinder and cut it up and then drill them all yeah but I want you to try those methods and then you can tell me if old Pandora steered you right or not because I think this is a better method. So I cut this side off while it was still big. This down to this size, which I really like. It's going to work for me. So here we are with the uh, transfers. You drop it in water. Be sure you cut it out nice and closely, just the way you want your um, image to end up. You don't want it too wide. You don't want to try to trim it back later. So you're keeping an eye on the size of your bead and the size of your transfer. Put that thin coat of white glue, any kind of white glue works. And I'm going to dry that uh, transfer off just a little bit. It's helpful for slippage if you don't have water underneath when you go to put it on here. 
What I love about these is that they're transparent, the colors on both sides. So it's not like a sticker or something, you know, this is something I can turn over and now I can have mirror images. So for that necklace, that was kind of important to me because I was using duplicates on the side of the center bead. That's all there is to it. I wrap that around there, smooth it down, and I'm going to let that dry. That's all I've got to do. All you need is a little bit of deep shine, and I mean a little bit. It barely, just let a drop fall out. You can always get more. But you want to start with just such a small amount because you don't need to expose it to the light. And uh, you're not going to use a lot of deep shine at any time. It's very slippery, and I had it formulated that way. So I've got just enough on the brush to moisten it. I need a thin, nice coat on here. Just like to turn the bead and now don't forget you can smooth that with your fingertip if you want to it's not sticky icky like uh, a lot of resins are you can just rub it off on a paper towel if your skin is sensitive you can use gloves but either way uh, if you feel there's any texture or bumps um, you can just smooth it before you put it in the light be sure you store your brush in foil so that uh, it doesn't get uh, you know accidentally cured from the light I just put my brush to the side. I don't clean them much. I just keep them in the foil. They stay moist. Now I'm just going to prop that bead up and put it in the light. It's super, super easy to do. I take the deck out of my lights so I can just tip it up like that and put it over the pieces, however many are in there. Press the button for a two minute timer or for staying on. Thank you for coming today, and I'll see you on Facebook and here on YouTube.